Hey guys, welcome to Made by Pico. We are quickly approaching Halloween, which happens to be one of my favorite holidays. In light of that, a few years ago since I moved to Canada, I started doing face paint every year instead of a full-blown costume because it's bloody cold here, so you have to put a jacket on wherever you go, which hides a lot of the costume unless you're indoors. So my face paint is really what just makes me excited every year about Halloween and with COVID here, I know that's become a little bit tricky as we have to wear masks if we are doing anything or even just at home and giving candy through our little tubes in light of the situation. I wanted to give you an option of something that's affordable and easy to make at your own home. And so this year I've come up with doing a DIY peacock face paint tutorial for you guys. If you are like me and come up with your costume just last minute, this should be super easy to get all the supplies at your local dollar store. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys today. I hope you love it as much as I do and we're going to get right into it. So first things first, we need to attach your mask. You can either use double sided tape or you can add hair ties to the sides of it to act as ear loops so that you can easily remove the mask on and off. For the purposes of this video, I am only attaching the cardstock version of the beak, but if you want to make this medical grade, you can take a disposable mask and put it underneath or glue it to the inside of the mask. To begin, we're going to start plotting out the guidelines for where the beak is going to go. So I just drew a line on the beak and brought it up around my eyebrow. Don't be too worried about how perfect this is, as this is very preliminary. Go ahead and repeat this step on the other side and then we'll start plotting out the next line. The next stripe is right next to the first one we drew, so it's going to go slightly underneath our eye and curve down onto the beak. It is significantly thicker than the original line, so go ahead and fill this one in more. Next you'll need some blue paint and either foam or a brush to apply it. To begin, I used the foam sponge in order to apply it across my forehead, but I switched over to a brush when I was working in those tighter spaces because it gave me more control. Once you've finished covering your forehead and the sides of your face with that blue color, we're going to add this sparkly teal color to the bridge of our nose, across the top of our forehead, and all around our eye sockets. Again, don't worry about making this perfect because a lot of this area will be covered up. While that dries, we're going to work on the beak. Taking that white paint, we're going to draw a line straight to the tip of the beak, and then we're going to start filling it in from the darkest shade of white to a lighter shade of white using the foam brush all the way down to the tips, and then fading out those edges with the foam again. Then we're going to do the bottom part of the beak, so taking it from our cheekbones and drawing a line straight to the tip of the beak, we're going to do that same ombre effect all across the bottom. Next we're going to need a black pencil eyeliner and we're going to very messily line the top and bottom of our eyes. We're later going to be going with a black liquid eyeliner for more intensity, so this just serves to create more of a smoky look. Next, we're going to take our black eyeshadow and extend those black portions on the mask up onto our face. The darker you can make these sections, the more seamless it will appear. Keep adding black eyeshadow until you've seamlessly blended it into the inner sections of your eye. Next, we're going to add some more eyeshadow onto the bridges of our eyebrow, framing in those white lines we've created and extending these black shapes down onto the middle section of our nose. Now using that same black eyeshadow, we're going to add some underneath those white lines in order to create more definition. Now we're going to take that light gray color and apply it all over the lids of our eyes. I added several layers in order to build up the pigment and create a bolder look. Once you've covered your eyelid, we're going to take that same gray and feather it downwards underneath our eye. Following this, we're going to take the gray and extend it up diagonally up to our hairline. Now we're going to take that bright white and accent the inner corner of our eyes by applying it in that crease and downwards into the beak. Don't forget to extend it down underneath your beak, that way it creates a more seamless transition between that face makeup and the beak. 
Now I just took that same eyeshadow and went over the white paint that we had formerly painted in order to brighten up those sections. In order to create even more definition, we're going to take our black pencil eyeliner and go around the inside of those two white outer shapes we've created. Next, we're going to start adding some more detail to the beak. So we're going to draw two long oval shapes towards the tip of the beak. These are going to be the peacock's nostrils. Next, we're going to draw two lines connecting with the black lines going around our eyebrows. These are going to go halfway down the beak. Then the last line we have to draw on the beak is just the dividing line, which goes from the tip of the nose all the way up. Now we're going to accent our eyes by creating elongated wing using our black liquid eyeliner. To do this, I just like to pull my skin taut, creating a crease from my finger down to my eye. And then I take my liquid eyeliner and begin drawing the line over that crease in order to get the perfect wing. Once you have the general shape down, you can go ahead and start filling in that section, starting from the outer corner and building it into your inner corner of your eye. Next, we're going to create an elongated tear duct into the crevices of our eye. To do this, I just took the eyeliner and drew a line coming down at an angle from my natural tear duct. Then I connected it with my lower eyelashes and went ahead and underlined the lower portion of my eyes. Then I went ahead and did any touch-ups I needed. Here I just added a little bit more black eyeshadow underneath that white portion in order to create more contrast. I also went ahead and added a little bit more of that white eyeshadow into those sections that got a little bit washed out with the other colors we've added. Now it's time to apply the feathers. We're going to start in the top part of our forehead, then the middle section, and then the part closest to our beaks. To do this, we're going to use double-sided tape and small feathers of your choosing. I got mine from the dollar store. Take a piece of that double-sided tape and put it onto the back of the feather, and then cut off any of the excess tape that shows up. Once you have this shape to the size you want it, look at where you want to place it. Just as a note, wherever you put it, you need to make sure that you leave it there because if you try to lift it off and put it in a new section, you'll take off the face paint you've already applied. Make sure that before you begin doing this process of applying the feathers, that the face paint that you've applied has fully dried. You can either let it dry naturally or you can use a blow dryer like I did and after just five minutes of passing it over the makeup, it cured so that no paint lifted off when I touched it with my finger. I wanted to note that when you get to this lowest section closest to your beak, you want to take that double-sided tape and gently tuck it underneath your beak and then press it lightly so that it stays tucked in underneath there. Once you've finished lining your forehead with feathers, go ahead and continue this process onto the sides of the beak. To do this, you will be using the same method as before, but instead of applying the double-sided tape to your face, you will be applying it directly onto the paper beak. I should note that if you decided to install the hair ties onto the beak in order to hold it up, this is a great method to hide it so no one can see them. Now it's time for some eyelashes. I literally picked mine up at the dollar store and in any other scenario they would probably look ridiculous on me, but for this instance they work perfect because they're long and tapered. To begin you're going to want to start by curling your eyelashes. It's a little bit hard with the beak on, but if you just press it down you should be able to do it. Then using whatever mascara you have lying around, go ahead and give your upper and lower eyelashes a good coat. Take your eyelashes off the packaging and put some eyelash glue onto the rim of it. Make sure to get the inner and outer corner as those are the ones that are most likely to fall. Then let it dry for 30 seconds and coming in at a 45 degree angle, press it into your eye. Then use the tweezers to help you align it onto the outside corner and inside corner of your eye. I like to use my finger to curl them upwards and then taking the tweezers again, I just squish my eyelashes together with the fake eyelashes to help them blend better. Using these tips, go ahead and apply the other set of eyelashes onto your other eye. And just like that, we're done our face transformation and it's time for hair. You could honestly leave your hair down like this and it would be really striking. 
but I'm going to show you one way you can put it up to make this look more peacock inspired. Go ahead and comb back your hair, getting rid of any knots or flyaways, and begin gathering your hair into a high ponytail. Holding that in place, use your other hand to free away any baby hairs to frame your face if you like. Next, you're going to create some volume by pulling that hair out from where you're holding it in your hand in order to create a nice bump. This is supposed to be an exaggerated look, so don't be afraid of the volume. Once you're happy with the height, go ahead and tie it off in the back. Then I found this feather piece at the dollar store, which I think would be perfect to attach to the back of my head in order to mimic peacock head feathers. To attach it, it was really easy. I just grabbed a bobby pin and placing it on the back of my head, I just placed the bobby pin through the base of the feathers and attached it securely to my head. Now to make this ponytail look more put together, I'm just going to take a little piece of my hair and wrap it around my hair tie in order to hide it. And then taking another bobby pin, we're just going to pin it underneath my hair so that it stays in place. As the final touch, I decided to add some of those blue feathers I had attached to my face to the hair piece in order to create more of a unified look. To do this, I once again just used my double-sided tape and attach them in random parts on the hair piece. And just like that, we've created a beautiful, budget-friendly DIY costume that you can throw together last minute and that abides by COVID mask guidelines in place this year. All right, guys, I hope you love that peacock face paint tutorial as much as I did. I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually hadn't practiced this before filming it, so I was a little bit anxious doing this on camera, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's such an easy and fun way to just transform your look for just a few dollars, and like I said, all the items can be picked up at your local dollar store. It's honestly just about having fun. Don't overthink it. I know some people see the final step and think that that looks really difficult, but if you just take it step by step, I promise you this is actually really easy to recreate. So if you do like this, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below because I'm going to be doing a bunch of really fun DIY projects every single week. As well, if you do recreate this, I would love to see. So if you could tag me at Made by Pico, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a happy Halloween and take care. Bye.